Make a snack. And if you take a look at the end of your NeoPixel strips, you're going to see three alligator clips. There are black, white, and red, and that stands for ground, signal, and power. Now, the ground can plug into any of the three pins that are labeled GND. And to think about ground, if you think about rich soil is black, the ground line is black. Now our computer program actually represents a signal that we're gonna be sending out to control the lights. Now, since we're gonna be controlling the lights, if it's helpful to think about light bulbs being white, we can plug the white wire into any of the circular connectors A1 through A7. Now these circles are referred to as pins in our code, and we're gonna clip ours to A1, and we wanna make sure that we remember pin A1 because we'll need to refer to that in our code. Now, in addition to those ones, there's also one that's labeled A0. We can use that for connecting to an external speaker. And I demonstrated that in the make code capacitive touch video. Now, finally, there's power. Now, we don't have to worry about things getting red hot here, but if it helps you to think about electricity and power heating things up, feel free to think about it that way. Now you can plug the red power wire into either of the two circles that say 3.3V on them. You can also plug your NeoPixel strip into the one that says V out. That's typically reserved for things that require a little bit more power, but uh, the NeoPixel strips will fall into that category, so V out will work as well. So back to make code. If we go under the light tray here, we can see that there are a bunch of blocks which can handle animation, including this one that says show animation. And what we can do with that as well is we can run things in the simulator and see how the animations work. We can also change the animations as well and experiment with some of those. Now, those all run in the simulator, but unfortunately, as of the time that I'm recording this video, there's no way to use the simulator to show you a NeoPixel strip, but we can still code a NeoPixel strip in make code. We just have to look at the physical strip to be able to see the results of our work. Now there are a bunch of blocks for NeoPixels, but they're sort of hidden. You've got to click on light and then the NeoPixel will show up underneath. And remember, NeoPixel will refer to our light strip. Now our simulator doesn't know that there's this light strip that's connected to our Circuit Playground Express. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tell our CPX that, hey, this light strip exists. So we're going to grab this block right here that says set strip two, and uh, we're gonna put that in an on start block. You can find on start inside of loops. So when we first start up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called strip, and that's gonna represent our strip of NeoPixel lights. And strip is just the variable name, the name given to the strip. But if you had multiple strips connected, you could create another variable and call it strip two, for example. But make code assumes strip is a good name for a light strip, and it gives you this automatically. And it says, uh, create the strip on A1. So that's the pin that we connected to. Remember, we could connect to the other ones as well, but we connected it to A1. And then the 30 pixels here represent represents the 30 lights that are on the NeoPixel strip that we're using. Now let's add an animation in here. We'll put it right in the forever loop. So I'll click on light and then click on NeoPixel. Remember, that's where we deal with the strip. And I'm just gonna select this one here that says strip show animation and I'll leave it with the rainbow. Now you wanna also make sure that your CPX is plugged into your computer. And after you do that, you wanna press the reset button so that the green lights show up and that puts it in bootloader mode, which means you can now download a program to the CPX. So I can click on download now that I'm in bootloader mode. And what I wanna do is, uh, since I'm using a Mac on the left-hand side, I'm just gonna look like for the volume here. It's mounted just like a USB drive. I don't have to change the name, but I can just select save. And my code executes on the CPX. There it is, it's the rainbow animation. That's what's executing in the forever loops. And it'll run this animation forever as long as your program is running. So the question is, can we turn the animation on and off? And we're gonna do that by clicking on button. So under the pink input tray, I can grab the block for button A. And then what we'll also do is we'll duplicate this. And it turns gray because there are two button A's, but I can click where it says button A in the second button and select button B, and now it's enabled. And so now we wanna put some kind of flag in the forever loop to be able to say, hey, either we wanna animate or we don't wanna animate. And so we're gonna create a variable for that. Now to do that, you just click the maroon tray that says variables, and then go up to where it says make a variable, click this blue button, we're gonna get a box that then asks us uh, to enter a new variable name. We'll call it animate and click okay. And we see an oval in there that says animate. Now in our code, we're gonna be able to set our animate value to either true or false. True, which means go ahead and animate, or false, which means don't animate right now. And now that we've created the animate variable, if we ever need to access that for our code, we can just click on this sort of peach colored, I guess it is, drawer here, pink colored maybe, and you'll find the animate oval right in there. Now notice also below here, we've got this thing that says set animate to. Now it says zero there, but we're gonna change it eventually so that it can be either true or false. 
Although let's click and drag this over, we'll put it right in on start. So that means when we start up, not only are we creating this variable called strip, which represents the 30 pixels that are connected to A1, but we're also creating this variable called animate. Now we don't want it to be set to zero, we want it to be set to false so that we don't animate right away. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the logic area and we're gonna grab this false, and then we're gonna put that in over top of the zero. So we say set animate to false. Now let's use this false value. We're gonna go back over into logic and we're gonna grab this lock that says if true then. And we're going to drag it over and we're gonna surround our animation. Now notice we set animate to false initially, but we're gonna head over to the variables drawer and we're gonna grab uh, the name of our animate variable and we're gonna drag it to replace true so that it says if animate then. Now remember animate can be either true or false. So if animate is true, it's initially false, but if it's true, we're gonna to go to the strip and show the rainbow animation for 500 milliseconds, but we're gonna to continue to do it over and over and over again forever, as long as that animate value is true. Now, how are we gonna set it to true? How about if button A is clicked, then animate will be true and we'll start the animation. So let's go over here to set animate to false and just duplicate it and drag this over. And then when button A is clicked, let's set animate to true. What do we want to do with button B? We want to go ahead and we also want to set animate, but now we want to set it to false. So again, button A is going to say animate, so that would go ahead and perform the animation on the strip. Button B is going to set animate to false, and that's going to make sure that we don't continue to animate on the strip. Now we're going to need to do one more thing. We're going to need to stop the animations, and we're also going to need to clear all of the lights so that we turn them off on the strip. And we'll do that right in button B, both of these code blocks that we're using are inside light and then click on NeoPixel. So again, they both have strip in front of them and uh, this should be working great. We click on A, it's gonna animate. We click on B, it's gonna stop animating and it's going to shut off all of our lights. So again, A and B, it'll work like a toggle. Let's give it a shot and see how things look. We're gonna download this to our Circuit Playground Express. Press your reset button so that your CPX shows the green ring. Make sure that you're in C Play Boot, we are. Click on save and we're ready to run. So once we've saved, the green light goes away and now we can press on button A and we can see our animation happens, the rainbow animation. B turns it off, A turns it on, B turns it, whoop, B turns it off, A on, B off, A on, B off, A on, nice. So now this is working well, but we can also see that there are a bunch of different animations. And if we'd like to go from this to this to this to this, we've got six different animations here. So essentially what we can do is every time we can set this to say, hey, we're on the first animation. If you click on button A again, then we'll go to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. And if you're on the sixth and you click it again, we'll go back to the first. Now one thing, instead of counting from one to six, we'll do something that's pretty common in computing. You could do one to six, but most of the time in computing, we actually start counting at zero. So things are what are called zero indexed. So let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to the end. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So we're going to go up here and we're going to actually create a new variable. And the variable would be called animation number. We'll say OK. And then right from the start, it says set animation number to 0. And what we'll do up here is we'll go to our variables in here and we can change our animation number by one. So we'll start at zero. The first time you press it, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and five is the last one. So if we press it again, what we want to do is go back to zero. So look what we're going to do. We're going to go into logic. We're going to put an if then uh, block in here, and we're going to say specifically in here, if, and we'll do a comparison in here where we say if animate number equals six so we were at five that was the last animation we press it one more we're at six then what we want to do is set animation number back to zero so we need another set animation so what i'm going to do is just duplicate set animation number so i'll duplicate that one and we've we're going to set it back to zero and it is zero so that's perfect so now what we want to do is we want to use this animation number so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into logic because we wanna use this animation number. And we're gonna use a variant of the if then statement, which is this one here that says if then else. So we're gonna put this in here and instead of saying if true, we're gonna say 
if animation number equals zero, we're gonna do our first animation, which is the rainbow. But then if we click on the little plus sign that's just underneath the else at the end of this if else block, we can go ahead and we can add another conditional in here, another else if. So we'll be able to say if animation number equals one, then do the second animation. If animation number equals two, then do the third animation. If animation number equals three, do the fourth animation number. If animation number equals four, do the fifth animation number. And then at the very end, we'll say else do the sixth animation. So uh, that's how we're gonna cycle through all of them. And remember, if we click it again, we're gonna go back to zero. So we have a loop inside of a loop, the very first one, it says, if we animate, okay, we're gonna animate, then it takes a look at our animation number and it knows it's gonna be zero through five. If it's zero through four, it'll do the first through the fifth animation. And if it's not, then it'll do the sixth animation. If you press B, we're going to stop our animations and we're gonna clear the strip. If you press A, we're gonna go ahead and start animations again and we'll continue to increment. And if we're back in number five, we'll go back to zero again. So let's see how this works. We'll click on download, we'll press on the reset button to make sure that we're in bootloader mode. We'll save it to CPlay boot, and here is our code running. So we start off at zero, so the first time we press it, we're going to do animation one, theater lights, and then I think that's comet and sparkle, and the next one is a chase and running lights, and then we're back to zero again, which is rainbow, and then we can shut it off. So good work. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoyed our Maker Snack.